go. Let's go. Come on. All right, ready? Here we go. We're learning the sikhs of Paparsha's Vayirah. But you do what's known. <clears throat> this is a speech given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in 1992. Actually, if you look in the, the archives of this, you can look in the YouTube, our YouTube uh, thing. So you can, if you go back a year, you know, you have to go back, like, I don't know, about a thousand classes, but they're all up there. It's pretty amazing. You can look and see. You can see that this we have this class also given, which I'm sort of considering just putting those up and not giving these classes, but it, I guess you give it live, it's better. Let's go. Yagdil Torah. Here we go. You do it's known. Shenosis, again, this was given by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, and the dates fell out on, on that year that the Rebbe gave it in 1992. The dates of the month fell out exactly like this year. So we'll see. So it's going to reach the Shabbat. This Shabbat of Vayera falls out on the 18th day of Cheshvan. 18th day of Cheshvan. It's the same thing this year. So let's go. You do it's known. Shenos of the in addition to the fact. Calling in the Torah that everything in the Torah, Hem Oros, they are teachings. Torah, Milash, and Horah. The whole essence of the Torah is to teach us something, taking it seriously. And if you learn something in the Torah and you can't understand what to learn from it personally in your personal life, then you're asking a good question. What, what can I learn from this in my personal life? What can I possibly learn? And that's what all the books of the Torah are, you know, the Gomorrah, etc., Midrash, especially books of Kabbalah, there's books of Musar, that explain how to change ourselves from the Torah. And the teachings of the Torah, you can learn like a hundred different things from every word, right? A hundred different things from every word. Therefore, it's it's a it's a commandment it's a, to increase in the Torah, to work in the Torah, the dibartabon, because the Torah contains so much positive information about how to interact with the world and how to re improve the world, and sometimes how to defy the world. So let's go. That's what Abraham did. Uh, the first Jew made him because he defied the world and he changed the world. You do it, including his own self. He defied his own nature also. Defied his own nature as well. But you do it's known that in addition to the fact that everything in the Torah is a teaching to every single Jew and every place where they are. Yesh had gasham yucheres. There's a special stress on learning the Torah in the weekly Torah portion. Hashayichim that are especially relevant to this time. Umimeno from it, Nimshachim is drawn to the whole year. Right, The Torah is right there. You can read the whole Torah every day if you want to, the written Torah. The whole. But interestingly enough, the, the, the rabbi set it up that every week we learn a different Torah portion in such a way that we finish the whole Torah once a year. There were places that they finished it like once every two years, three years. But it's now we finish it once a year, the written Torah. So because of that, it ends up that the Torah is now integrated in a certain time. This particular Torah portion, we read at this particular time. So there must be an addition to the fact that the, everything in the Torah has a message to us all the time. So that fact that this week's Torah portion falls on this week, so it must have a special <clears throat> emphasis on learning from this week's Torah portion. Odzot, in addition... Cave and since Shekol and Yanya Torah, everything that's in the Torah are a very exact. Mistaber Lomar, it's very logical to say. She knows of Allah Shaykh's Kalolis, the Parshas of Shabu, in addition to the fact that this week's Torah portion has a special relevance to this particular time. Yesh Gam, Limud, Bahora, Meakavius, the Yom Shabbos. Also, the fact is everything is relevant. <coughs> of this Shabbat, that this Shabbat we read the whole entire Shekorim B'tzibur, Parsha the Shavu. We read the whole entire Torah portion. This entire portion of Vayera we read in this week. Especially this Shabbat Kodesh. First of all, it's learning Parsha Vayera and also learning from the sitting Shabbat Parsha Vayera. It comes out on what date of the of the month? The fifth, 18th day of Cheshvan. What's so special about the 18th day of Cheshvan? The 18th day of Cheshvan, first of all, every day is special in itself. Every moment is special. Nevertheless, why is it special? Because God is creating it. God is creating it itself, right? Hariu, 
גם תוך גמו יומים, I said this example a lot of times, but I'll say it again. I saw somebody, I saw two examples of people, they found old paintings or a painting rolled up in a, in a thing, and they, they, they liked the painting. They took it to get it appraised. And they said, what, this is a, a genuine, you know, who knows some famous, you know, uh, a painter. And the other one was another guy, another famous painter. I don't have to say their names. It doesn't make any difference. One was worth like $2 million. The other one was worth like $500,000. So they're crazy. Just because these paintings, they were nice paintings. But, you know, if I would make the same, they, there are people that are artists, that are expert artists. They can copy any painting in the world and you can't tell the difference. They can copy a Rembrandt. Or you can't tell the difference between the two of them. You have to bring the biggest experts that they come and they can say, hey, this thing was just done three hours ago. Right? But nevertheless, but this person's painting, as soon as it's known who did it, it's worth oh, $500 is nice. To, about genuine Rembrandt is worth, you know, $20 million, who knows, maybe more. Every second of our life is, is a genuine God. God is making it. Every second is precious. Every human being is a genuine God created by God, right? It's got a signature. God's signature is on each and every one of them. What's God's signature? Our life, we're alive. That's God's signature. And the fact is God is creating us. Every, okay, so if so, every moment is precious. Every human being is precious. <clears throat> so they, but in addition to that, but also the idea of the 18th day of Cheshvan, this is three within three days, that everything within three days is special. It makes it like one unity of Chaf Mar Cheshvan, the 20th day of Mar Cheshvan. What's the big deal about Chaf Mar Cheshvan? It's a day, right? This is the day that the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, the Rebbe Rashab, he was born. Now, if you consider that every Rebbe of Chabad is the Mashiach, is the Mashiach of his generation. And if you consider also that tzaddikim never die. So they still exist now. How this works exactly, I have absolutely no idea. But in the end, all the Jews are going to come back to life. There's going to be the raising of the dead. How that's going to work, I also have absolutely no idea whatsoever. Don't ask me. I know certain details about it, but what did God have to live, 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 raise up the dead? Let the souls go up into heaven and stay in there. What's Heaven is bad. What's wrong with heaven? Nevertheless, that's it. This world is tremendously important to God. This world is infinitely more important than all the heavens or whatever, to the degree that God gets pleasure from this world. And before God created man, God had no pleasure. Huh? Does that make sense? That also makes no sense. It's, that goes in the same category as the raising of the dead. This is the day of the birthday of the Rebbe. Now, now every generation, there are great tzaddikim. In every generation, there are people that can see the future, the people that can help others, that know the whole Torah. But Mashiach is a whole different level. Mashiach is a whole different thing. Mashiach is a person that his whole job in life, his whole purpose in life is to bring the whole entire world, including animals, <laughs> including plants, including minerals, rocks, to realize, to shine out, to announce the oneness of God. A uh, whole different business. And this is all through the Torah. This is all through the Torah. The whole essence is to use the Torah to reveal the truth in the world, that the world is an amazing, beautiful, fantastic, mysterious, exciting creation. Every instant, every book. So if the and if you read the writings of the of the of the all the rebbe's of Chabad, they wrote a lot. They wrote a lot. The word the the writings of the fifth rebbe of Chabad are very very unique. They're very deep, tremendously deep. There's a tremendous amount. And he explains every possible question you might possibly have. You have to understand the languages. Okay, so the, anyway, that's his birthday. So we're celebrating the, the day that this miraculous thing came into the world called the fifth Rebbe of Chabad. Obehekdem, let's, first of all, here's the story. Okay, let's have a story. There's a story by Baal the Hello, the whole letters by the, by the Rebbe Rishab, Rebbe Shalom Dovber, that's his name. Rishab is his the initials, Shalom, says Shalom Dovber, this is Shalom Bear. <clears throat> so it says, oh, there's a story about the Rebbe. When he was four or five years old, he went in 
to his, no, he passed away in 1920, right? 1920. So he was born in like, what is it, like 1840, something like that, right? 40, 1850. No, 1860 was born. Uh, I think so, 1860. He was born like around 1860, died in 1920. So that's what they were talking about. <clears throat> His son took over then after him, the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Okay, so there was a story. When he was four or five years old, he went into his grandfather. His grandfather was the third Rebbe of Chabad, called the Tzemach Tzedek. He went in this week's Shabbat portion, by Bayera, and he started to cry. <clears throat> his father, his grandfather said, why are you crying? And he said, why is it that God appeared to Abraham? And to us, he doesn't appear. Why doesn't we want to see God? I want to see, what well, it's such a problem. God is everywhere. Why can't I see him? That Samach Tzedek answered him, when there's a, a Jew, a tzaddik, Abraham, when he was a Jew, a tzaddik, what is that tzaddik? That he served God his whole life, every instant of his life. He was only sacrificing, self-sacrificing for God. When he decides, Begil Tishim at 99 years old, that he has to circumcise himself, then he, and he's got to start all over. You have to make such an um, immense change. Roy, who, a person like that, he deserves that God should appear to him. That's the story. He was four or five years old. He came into his grandfather crying. He was genuinely crying. Why doesn't God appear to me? It says in the Torah that God appears to Abraham. The Torah is given to every Jew. Why doesn't God appear to me? I don't understand. He said, when you get to be 99 years old, and then you decide, decide that you have to start over again, you have to start from the very beginning, and to the degree you have to circumcise yourself, <clears throat> and only then are you really connected to God, <clears throat> a normal person would say, okay, enough, you know, who knows... I have to do it in 99. Maybe next year God's going to say something more. Cut off your leg, cut off your foot. Ah, enough now, enough. I'm finished. 99 years old, I'm an old person already. I've had enough. Any normal person would say that. right? I've been serving. What have I been doing the last 99 years old? Right? I've been going to the movies. I've been serving God every single instant of my life. right? Watching, the, the playing the video games. I've been only interested in the truth and to sacrificing myself for the truth. 99 years old. And now God is telling me I have to circumcise myself. Right? A normal person will say, no way. Right? There's no end to it. What did Abraham say? Oh, no problem. Sure, 100%. Yeah. Well, he says, if you have that attitude, then God will appear to you. <clears throat> now, of course, the, the Rebbe could have said, well, I have that attitude. He said, yeah, you got it now. Well, you be 99 years old. Hold. Abraham also had that attitude when he was four or five. He says he recognized God. Let, what, what happens when you're at 70? What happens when you're 80? What happens when you're 90? What happens 95? <laughs> what happens 98? Right? Right? 98? You might be willing, yeah, 100%. 99 years old. God comes to him and says, circumcise. You know what it means to circumcise? A, a, a man 99 years old to be circumcised? This is a very dangerous thing. Not to go into the details. <clears throat> the, the circumcision is, is a, you know, it's an operation. There's blood and pain. And for Abraham to do it himself, 99 years old, no problem. If you have that attitude when you're 99 years old, then you're worthy that God should appear to you. See, uh, this stresses at first glance, by Yerah, Allah Hashem, this is relevant only to a big tzaddik, right? That he's 99 years old. That's what his father-in-law, that's what his grandfather told him. His grandfather told the Rebbe Rishab, listen, do me a favor. When you're 99 years old, ask again. In other words, it seems to be saying that this question about God appearing to me, it's not relevant to me. It's relevant to only big tzaddikim, like Abraham, and only when they're 99 years old. And then he decides that he has to circumcise himself. And so what's, what does it come to tell us? This is not relevant. So what was he crying for? Therefore, this was the minor, the admor nishmaseid, and this was his answer of the tzamach tzedek to his grandson, that even when he was even when he was small, he was a tzaddik. And like it says in the Gemara, there's a Gemara about Abai and Rabbah over there in, in, in Brachot in the beginning. It says, Botsin, Botsin, Nikatve Yedia. It says that pumpkins from when they're small, you can tell what they're going to be when they're older. Kamavu, like it's understood by the story. You see that the, 
boy, four or five years old, he really cared. He really felt bad. And he was really crying that he doesn't see God. That even him, the altar, it seems that the, I'm sorry, that the Tzemach Tzedek was telling his grandson, the, the Rebbe Rashab, it's not relevant to you. Even though you're a big tzaddik, it's true. But then we see that we, we want to have God revealed to you. But nevertheless, wait till you're 99. Says the Rebbe, it's not so. But Tzarek Lavin, we have to understand, Ma'ulimit, if so, what's the teaching to every single Jew from this Vayera, Allah Hashem? This week's Torah portion says that God appeared to Abraham. God appeared, it doesn't say to Abraham, but we know it's Abraham. Vayera, Allah Hashem, that God appeared to him. <clears throat> That's why the Rebbe Rashab cried. He said, if God appeared to him, why can't he appear to me? And his grandfather said, it's not relevant to you. It's relevant only to 99-year-old Sadiqin. If so, he sort of threw cold water on the whole interest. Uh, what is it relevant? The Torah is supposed to be to every Jew, even to a person that didn't reach the level of Tzadik. And how much more so they didn't get the level of 99 years old? Who, who gets 99 years old today? There are people there. What's the relevance to us, me and you? And of course, and it is relevant to me. What, what, what can we learn from it? And what can we learn from the answer? Well, the answer seems to be a very, how do you say, discouraging answer. How does that supposed to be? That's the opposite of what the Rebbe is trying to say, that the Torah is relevant to each one of us. And that some of are saying, yeah, maybe, but not this. It's not so. Is it so? Let's see. You do it's known that the revelation, this giloy of Vayera Lav Hashem, after and by means of the mitzvah of circumcision, who be'ofen nali yoter is very very high. Ad the iloy shebein aroch lagabi a giloy incomparably greater than Vayera Hashem al Avram in lech lecha before the circumcision. Okay, what's happening over here? What's the novelty of Abraham? Abraham began to reveal God in the world. Before that, God was a spiritual idea. You wanted to be godly, you had to be spiritual, leave the world. Abraham made it that a person, by means of self-sacrifice, can reveal the physical world to be godly. And he began with the circumcision. The circumcision was the first physical commandment, commanded by God, that remained physical in the world. Remained physical. It was godliness physical. And this is <clears throat> the revelation of God which was caused. Which that's the whole purpose that we're here for, is to show the creator and the creation. That's why Adam was created. <clears throat> <clears throat> but after the circumcision was higher than anything that it could have possibly done before. Now we have to remember that God appeared to Abraham before. He appeared to Noah. Says he appeared. He appeared to Adam. After the, Right, God said to Adam, don't eat from the tree, don't etc. All these revelations that happened before the circumcision were not as high as the revelations of God after, in two ways. Number one, godliness. Kamosh Gatub, like it says, Vayera, love Hashem, <coughs> that God appeared to him, Gile Shem Avaya, a revelation of the name of Yudke Vavke, which is above the name Elohim. Elohim is the aspect that God created the world with. But Darga Nali B'Shem Hashem, and not only just the shame in the aspect of God's name, Yud, K, Vav, K, but even a higher, high level in this name itself. Like we said before, remember we just finished learning, there's four letters in the name of God, and each letter shows on a higher level than the level, level. <clears throat> each letter shows on a higher let, level <laughs> than the letter that comes after it. So Yud shows on a higher level than Hey, and Hey shows on a higher level than Vav, etc. This is <clears throat> higher than the name of Hashem, which is represented in the name Lech Lecha. And it says that there's two names of God, the same name, Hashem Hashem. <clears throat> one is the, related to the creation of the world, and the one is related to God's essence. So in this name of God's essence, the, the, God's essence, the, the revelation of God after the circumcision was greater than before the circumcision. It was revealed to Abraham, Hashem, that God appeared to him. It was a higher revelation, and it came down lower. 
there's this higher revelation <coughs> was revealed to him, and it was accepted by him, it was received by him, integrated by him, absorbed. Abraham became a vessel to this highest revelations of God, which were drawn down into his essence, which is not the case <coughs> if, if, if before Abraham circumcised himself as Abraham was didn't have the power to reveal to accept such a high revelation. So <clears throat> after Abraham was circumcised, then he was able to evoke a higher level of godliness, and also he became a vessel to receive this, which both of those weren't true before he circumcised himself. The Indian said this is hinted at in the Hemshech of the Pasuk and Huyeshev Bakomayom says that Abraham sat in his tent, he said. In the heat of the day. That's what it says in the Torah. What's the heat of the day? The heat of the day, it says that God took the sun from its sheath. This shows on the God of the Torah, that God himself was a big revelation of not just sun, heat, physical sun, but also spiritual sun. God is also likened to the sun. <clears throat> it was a big spiritual revelation, as it is in itself, without any covering without any sheath over it, without any magain venartic, without any uh, veil over the name of God. What is the name, veil of the name of God? The name Elohim. The name Elohim, that's the aspect that God creates the world with. And the name Yudke Vavke, that is, so to speak, God himself. <clears throat> and that's what it means that the, the heat of the day, that God removed any concealment from the sun. There was a big revelation of godliness. This is what happened, by the way. I don't know if I said this in the beginning of the class. It says that Abraham <clears throat> was sitting in his tent in the heat of the day. So what's the big deal? Why was he doing that? What did he do? So he says it was three days after he circumcised himself. Three days after. This is right after the circumcision. He was sitting up. What in the world was he doing that? Why did, why did he sit in the entrance of his tent? He should have been laying down inside of the tent to protect himself from the heat. It says he was looking for guests. Abraham loved guests. He couldn't stand it if he didn't have guests. He was, he was, and, and there came guests. So the guests were the angels. Three angels came. <clears throat> he said the guy had mercy on him. God had mercy on him. <clears throat> so he says there was a tremendous revelation of God. Nevertheless, Abraham was said he was sitting. What does he mean sitting? That it was settled by him, this revelation of godliness that was that the highest revelation, <clears throat> which was represented by the heat of the day. Like I said, God took out the sun, removed the, the sheath, took away the covering of the sun. It was revealed and accepted by him in a, in a sit, settled way. Just do one more. The reason that this is this highest level of godliness, which is drawn down and revealed in an inside way, was made by means of the circumcision, <clears throat> because of the, in this commandment of, cir, of circumcision, there's two things. First of all, mitzvahs and milah. Just, I just want to say one thing. We're talking about this revelation of God, revealing God, revealing God. What does that mean? What does it mean to reveal God? What does it mean to reveal God? So we had several examples of God being revealed in this physical world. One of the examples was on Mount Sinai, that God revealed himself on Mount Sinai to all the Jewish people. <clears throat> Before that, there was also God revealed himself also to all the Jewish people when he split the sea. So they said, Zekeli, they're all pointed, it says. God was revealed. But in a more settled way, God was revealed in the Holy Temple. People went to the Holy Temple and they felt that there's a creator. And they felt fortunate, happy that they're being created. Uh, this is not a normal feeling that people feel. <clears throat> <clears throat> but they felt this feeling. Everyone felt that there's a creator. And they felt fortunate to be alive, to be created, to be able to serve the creator, repay the creator. For this amazing gift he's giving us of life and existence. This was all begun, these revelations of the giving of the Torah and the and the <clears throat> the, um, the holy temple. And finally, the revelation of Mashiach is going to make in the whole world. This was all begun by Abraham when he made the circumcision. Circumcision in itself contains these two opposites: a, a highest revelation of God possible and in the lowest places possible. Because that's what the circumcision did. Mitzvah's Mila is above all the other commandments of the Torah. Why? 
says that all the commandments of the Torah, that God made three covenants. By giving of the Torah, it says that the covenant, that the Torah is Brit Olam, <coughs> that the Torah is a Brit Luchot, a Brit, called the Luchot, a Brit. The three times the Torah is called the covenant with God. And on circumcision, when God said to make to Abraham, he's going to make a circumcision with him, says it, Briti, Samti, Brit B'Sarachem, three, 13 times it says. Circumcision is higher than any. And together with this fact that circumcision is higher than all the other commandments, Harihu, this is the only commandment which is revealed in the physical body. Uh, none of the other commandments are in your physical body permanently. To fill in, you put them on, take them off. Shabbat comes and goes. The circumcision is there permanently. Briti b'besarchem, it's in the flesh. In the lowest places, <clears throat> that's where this is expressed. I know the connection with God, which is above understanding. This is the, what's a brit? A brit means a connection to God, which is above any understanding. Above any of the uh, big word I'll use now, vicissitudes of life. Eh, nice word. Without any of the all the things that happen in life, right? Other than that you, you 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 succeed, you God forbid you fail, you're healthy, you're the opposite, you're this, all the things, these change a person, right? This changes a person. It says it could change a person, it could change your mind, it could change your opinion about everything, but it doesn't change the connection of a Jew to God. And it doesn't change the connection of God to us. That's the Brit. Above all <clears throat> these conditions, above all situations, this Megala V'choderis is in the physical flesh. This novelty is even more <clears throat> in the Chidush Gadol Yoter B'Mitzvah Milo. There's even something greater in the circumcision that by means of it, is, the holiness is drawn not just in the physical body, but also in the physical world. Brit Mila is Kashur and Brita Oritz because the connection, God gave Abraham the eternal covenant in his flesh at the same time when he gave the eternal covenant in the land. God gave Abraham a permanent connection, a permanent sign, not just in his physical flesh. I mean, people die also. Then the words that say, in the land, the land doesn't die. Says that God, by means of the commandment of circumcision, the Jewish people get the land of Israel. I know, namely, that the commandment of circumcision, this is Netinet Koach, this is a power to make from the land of Israel, Hagash means the physical land, which is like any other land in the world, Eretz Canaan, to make it Eretz Israel, to make it into the land of Yisrael. Yisrael means the land of Ratzah. Eretz, I'm sorry, Eretz means it ruts, it wants, it runs to do what God wants. That's the land of Israel. <clears throat> so now they had elections in the land of Israel, etc., etc. This is totally superficial. A, a good, that's a good thing you should do, you know, but why not? But you have to understand the land belongs to God. And the land belongs to the Jews. God gave it to the Jews. God gave it to the Jews. He's giving it to the Jews. If the Jews don't act like Jews, that doesn't change anything. The Jews want to give the land away. It changes absolutely nothing, except endangering a lot of people for no reason. But the land is eternally belongs to the Jews, and the, and the Jews eternally belong to God. it's kula. I mean, the fact is the land belongs to God also. It's not. But God gave it to the Jews. So even if there's not, if there's only just one Jew in the world, like there was in the time of Abraham, the land belongs to us. Or it's kula and dira until the whole land becomes a dwelling for God. Or a little bit deeper, we'll talk about God willing tomorrow. Let's do the yom yom now. What happened? What happened? Let me move this thing over here. I didn't change the method. Got to go to English. That's it. Give a beautiful speech, but it's in the wrong language. Okay, here we go. Here we go.
One of the Alter Rebbe's, the Alter Rebbe, the first Rebbe of Chabad, who wrote the book, the Tanya, and, and what we're learning. They were called short sayings, verter. Shema Yisrael. Shema means to understand. A Jew feels and senses. Shema, he feels. Havai Elokeinu, that our strength, Elokeim, that's our power, is Havai, above nature. And Havai Echad, and that God is one. Every Jew senses and knows that Jewish life, the fact that we're a Jew, this is above nature, and this God, who is above nature, is one, that he's also in nature, creates all nature. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, at 3 o'clock, we'll learn the Chumash with some commentary.